Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. Families forced from their homes in this Washtenaw County community after a string of suspicious fires. Four fires within a week and a half now has state police investigating. Fortunately, no one has been hurt, but neighbors are very concerned. A serial arsonist is setting these fires. Pamela Osborne live uh, tonight where firefighters had to put out another fire today. Yeah, that fire started here at this home. It was vacant, but it quickly spread over to this unit. A gentleman inside did make it out, but as you can see, both are uninhabitable right now because of these fires, which we know are being investigated as suspicious. Clouds of smoke and flames could be seen rolling from a mobile home on Spruce Lane. If the wind wouldn't have been blowing the direction that it was blowing, it would have burned our house down too. And it would have been way worse. Cliff and Tashina Winery felt little relief. They say they're worried by how many fires have popped up in their neighborhood. Oh, there's a fire bug around here. I really feel like it. What he suspects was confirmed Wednesday night by the Superior Township Fire Chief. He says there have been four suspicious fires within the past week and a half alone. All of the fires started outside of the homes in trash cans. It needs to stop. There's too many families with kids and pets and... I don't know. This property was vacant. We're told a gentleman living in the home next door made it out unharmed. So did the family whose mobile home went up in flames Tuesday. They were alerted to the fire by neighbors. I talked to the woman as she was leaving today, coming in here to see our house, and she was like, just best of luck. I hope your house is okay. Our house just burnt down. We don't know what happened. I just want something to change, something to happen, be, make us safe again, because I don't feel safe. And there are a lot of people feeling that exact way tonight. Now, somebody with a company that owns this park was out here trying to check on residents, make sure they're okay, make sure the man who lives here had some other arrangements set up. The Washtenaw County Sheriff is also involved in this investigation. Now, if you have any information, you should give their office a call. Reporting live tonight in Superior Township, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. I sure hope someone does. All right, Pam. Despite a whole lot of orange barrels and road closed signs, Kego Harbor wants everybody to know, yes, they are indeed open. Mara McDonald is live along Cass Lake Road and Mara Cass Lake has major construction from Orchard Lake <laughs> all the way to Waterford. My goodness. It's a lot, Kimberly, and take a look. You can see the road closed signs are everywhere. It's an orange barrel maze, but the business is down here. Everything is open. <laughs> Kego Harbor wants you to know they're still welcoming you to their downtown, despite the signs and the cones. <laughs> Chef Jeremy Grandin's Jaybird Smoked Meats survived the pandemic with a robust takeout business. They'll survive the road construction, too. And I think the main thing is it just sort of confuses people. He's not wrong. The road closed signs are up, but the commercial strip is still open. The road commission has critical bridge work and road work to do. So the signage is kind of like ambiguous because it says Cass Lake Road closed up on Orchard Lake, but it's not actually closed. It's closed a mile down. Grand and strong customer base will always find a way to get to the barbecue destination. And thankfully, all of this is supposed to clear out by the end of September. Originally, they wanted to do the project uh, starting right around the 1st of July. And we work with the business owners in the community and the road commission. We had several meetings and we pleaded with the contractor to start actually in August as opposed to 1st of July. If there's any benefit to the temporary road work, Grandin says be on the lookout for special dinners and menus. We plan on maybe doing a little more, you know, because of this. We might have time to actually do a little more of those things. Back here live, and don't be surprised if you see the other businesses along this Cass Lake Road stretch doing the same thing. They really want their customers to remember they're still open. We're live in Kego Harbor tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Open and the ribs look good, too, mm -hmm. in that video, Mara. <laughs> Appreciate <Yes>. it. <laughs> Well, tonight, crews with the EPA are on the scene of a diesel leak downriver. EPA says red dye diesel was released from an underground storage tank at the site of the closed Riverside Osteopathic Hospital in Trenton. That's just off West Jefferson near King Road. Video from Sky 4 shows the area that's impacted. The EPA says about five gallons of diesel from the tank entered the storm drain and discharged into the Detroit River. Also did air monitoring around the perimeter of the hospital making sure that no residents were impacted by, by any kind of you know, respiratory hazards. And so 
We believe that the situation is stabilized. The EPA says over the next couple of days, the property owners will drain the storm sewer in order to remove the residual diesel. Crews are now working to determine how it made its way from the underground tank into the storm sewer. The two men convicted of plotting to kidnap Governor Whitmer will be sentenced later this year. Adam Fox on December 12th, Barry Croft on December 28th. Governor Whitmer today weighing in on the verdict. For years, I've been asking people to lower the temperature. Um, this is, shows that people will be held accountable. Um, we settle our differences at the ballot box, and then we move forward. And um, I think yesterday's uh, conclusion of the trial was a uh, just result. Meanwhile, federal attorneys are asking for a reduced sentence for Ty Garvin for his cooperation in the case. Garvin pleaded guilty to conspiracy charges last year and was sentenced to more than six years in prison. President Biden reveals his plan for student loan debt forgiveness. The plan, or the plan rather, will forgive up to $10,000 for borrowers who make less than $125,000 a year. Actually, relief of up to $20,000 for Pell Grant recipients. The president says the move will allow borrowers to put their money to other uses. Top Republican leaders have a lot of problems with the plan, and they argue it will only worsen inflation. People can start, finally crawl out from under that mountain of debt to get on top of their rent and their utilities, to finally think about buying a home or starting a family or starting a business. I think it's a fundamental tenet of American life that if you owe money, as challenging as it is, you have an obligation to pay it back. The president will also extend the payment pause for one final time through December 31st of this year. Special rally in downtown Detroit for Ukraine Independence Day. Dozens gathered along Jefferson Avenue near Hart Plaza. It's been 31 years since Ukraine tried to leave Russia, and it's fighting once again to survive all these years later. Today, President Biden announced he's sending almost $3 billion in new military aid that will allow Ukraine to keep fighting for years to come.